it's coming on about five years on January. I will be an expat here in Croatia for five years in January. Can you believe that? Time flies when you're having fun. So far in the five years, I got to travel to Argentina. Uh, I've seen Brazil and Paraguay. I've seen France. I've seen everything, including your mother's underpants. No, I'm joking, but I've seen a bunch of things that I never thought I would see living in Hamilton, Ontario. But here I am on Otak Chiovo. Look at this view. You can see how humid it is because it's cloudy. So all that is humidity. That's why you can't have a clear view all the way to the houses or the islands. That's Shulta, by the way. And that's a container ship, I think. But we're out here and we're talking about five things I hate about Croatia. Since being, I have a five-year experience now. So I can actually talk about these things with more detail or actually get a better better reasoning on why they suck so here we go what up people this is bonjo don't forget to click like subscribe share and always comment check out the merch check out everything if you can support your boy support the family look at this though this is oh talk chiovo let's get into the video now the first thing may not come to a surprise to anybody especially if you're living in Croatia but Croatia has terrible bureaucracy like to go to the MOOP and to get some paperwork done like whether it be anything anything you name it your driver's license whatever you got to do paperwork wise you got to go to the police station and that is the MOOP and at the MOOP they usually have a lot of older generation traditional people that are just like you know smoking cigarettes heavy and kind of just miserable hate their job under they're they're under prepared and overworked like sometimes when you go there in the summer you got everybody trying to get residence permits so they're all trying to sign up their workers because they get workers from Argentina from Nepal from India from everywhere from philippines now you see them everywhere coming here to work because we're we need workers but to get those paperwork done you got to wait in a huge line and there's like two women that don't give a crap about nobody and just want to get home they're not happy they hate their work there's no air conditioner they're sweating they're smoking you know they're just miserable so to get that done is impossible like for me my mom is croatian so i should be a croatian by default with citizenship should be easy to get especially here in Croatia they told me that it would be easier to do all my citizenship in Canada I'm like oh, wait a minute so coming to Croatia the land of the Croatians it's harder to get your paperwork done they're like correct I'm like now nah, how, how does that make sense I had to go to Zagreb like twice a month that's like four or five hour bus ride away and that's not easy you got a kid you got things to do you, you're running a business you got your wife working how are you supposed to how are you supposed to do that? They think you can just go. And every time you go to the police station, they're like, oh, come back. You forgot this one piece. I'm like, I was just here yesterday. You told me all I needed was this piece. They're like, yeah, but you also need this piece now. I'm like, so why didn't you tell me that yesterday? They're like, oh, whatever, you know, that's just their attitude. It's like, maybe it's just in Dalmatia, but it's just like, ah, we'll get it done. It seems like, like nothing gets done, yet it all gets done. You know, after all the running around and all this stuff, the main woman here at the MOOP, she comes up to me. She looks at my birth certificate. She's like, oh, only your mother's on your birth certificate. And she's Croatian. I'm like, yes, like I said two years ago. And she's like, why didn't you just tell me that now? You can have your uh, citizenship in two freaking weeks. I'm like, two weeks. So all you had to do was look at that little piece that I was showing you. And that confirmed it. And then you say, okay. And I got the stamp of approval. She's like, yeah. I'm like, I gave you that, I gave like eight different people that, and nobody said anything. So yeah, they'll give you the whole run, run around, like for, just to see if you quit. Like, they want to know, how bad do you want to be Croatian? Do you really want to be Croatian? All right, well, we're going to test you, test your patience, and put you through the ringer. And so that's what they do. Don't get mad. It doesn't help getting mad. Just smile, kill them with kindness, and just do what they say. If, if it's not a big deal for them to do it now come back in a week who cares if because they don't care so as long as your process is in, i mean your your papers are in process like in motion you're allowed to stay so 
if you have a three month visa and it runs out tomorrow and you go to the police station and they take some of your papers, it's in process. So you have until they say no. But they're gonna say yes. Every time you think they're gonna say no, they'll be like, oh, we're kicking you out of the country, da da da. All these kind of uh, empty threats. And then after they'll shake your hand, welcome to Croatia. You're now Croatian. <laughs> you, you've been missing out, you know, like that. It's, it's they're putting you through the ringer. They're testing your patience to see how bad you want it. And uh, yeah, that's, that's like the biggest headache here. Like anything from buying a house title, you gotta make sure that they, the people you're buying the house off of actually own the property. Because if they don't own the property and you buy the house and the original owners of that land come back, you lose your house that you just bought in another country. So you gotta watch out for these things. It took five years for the house paperwork to go through. Like I'm telling you, I'm telling you, that's not that's not that normal. Like five years. Five years. So the bureaucracy is crazy here. Crazy. But it's not that bad if you just sit back and it and just you know, just let it come to you. You don't have to because I, I understand from the western part or like America or Canada, we're used to just doing it and getting it. Doing it and getting it. And here you just gotta go with the flow, man. And don't stress out. Nobody's stressed out. So don't stress out. And that's it, bureaucracy. As I'm walking through the fires of yesteryear, I look how sad it is. And this is what happens every year in Croatia. There's lots of fires here from people being reckless with flames. Uh, from backpackers in the forest to people burning materials, people doing barbecues in the forest, you know, you name it, you got it. It's just too hot here to start a fire. But let's get into the second point. So you got to watch out for that, guys. Tourists. Tourists. Tourists are the, you know, tourists are the a big pet peeve. But also, I love the tourists. It's like a love-hate relationship because without tourists, a lot of us wouldn't get that fancy car. A lot of us wouldn't get that fancy boat. We wouldn't be able to go to ski trips in Bosnia. We wouldn't be able to go see the big castles in Romania. You know what I mean? Go eat some pierogies in Poland. We wouldn't be able to do that without tourists. So I love the tourists, but I also hate them because a lot of tourists are entitled. Like a lot of tourists will stay at like the cheapest place, the cheapest room. I know I have friends that have all kinds of rooms, two star, one star. Oh, star hostels, five stars, villas, you know, they have all kinds of star rating places. And the, they're all the same. Like, it's always the guys that are paying the least amount that want the five star accommodation. They're like, well, we're going to we're going to ask you if we can pay $40 cash, 40 euros in cash. And can we get the best room available? It's like, well, no, minimum room around here is 120. So I don't know where you're getting 40 euros from, but Jesus Christ. And then when they come in here, oh, well, this is a little bit dusty. This is that. This is that. It's like, bro, you just worked yourself into a deal. Now you're complaining. Oh, tourists are bad. And then you got the tourists, the young tourists that come to split and they get hammered. They drink in public. They're swearing, throwing bottles at the Diocletian's palace, pissing on the statues. These guys. These guys are just a sh these guys are just an embarrassment to whatever country they come from. They can be from young guys from Poland, from England, from Canada, from America, wherever. I don't care where you're from. Just don't do that. Walking through the through the Diocletian Palace, through all these shops and stores with your bathing suit on, with your speedo. Like, bro, nobody wants to see you smuggling grapes into a, a variety store. Stop smuggling the damn grapes. You hear me? Nobody wants to see that shit. Put your damn clothes on before you go in the store. There's kids around. Nobody wants to see your grapes, bro. Jesus. But yeah, tourists, it's it's weird. It's a love-hate relationship. It's like the Dalmatia mask, they call it. They put it up in the summer, the smile, and then they take it down in the winter because they're sick of it. They don't want to speak English anymore in the winter. When you come here in the winter, in the summer, two totally different people. But some people don't even try to wear the mask. They're just like, what do you want? Yeah, and they're like... Can I get a, excuse me, sir, can I get a, can I get a beer? To like, Phew, are you fucking kidding me? You're going to make me work? And that, yeah, some people are still like that, but you get that everywhere. But tourists, tourists, man, just settle down. Stop acting so entitled. Stop being disrespectful and just respect things and enjoy where you are. Don't get blackout drunk. You're in Croatia. Enjoy the Croatian culture, the beaches and everything. Why you want to get blackout drunk? Be disrespectful. So that's number three, the freaking tour. I mean, that's number two, that, the tourists. Jesus. I'm all worked up now. Point number three is 
everything is geared towards the tourists. It's funny because I just ex complained about tourists. Now I'm complaining about the government gearing everything towards the tourists. Like, I understand you got to make that paper when you, when it's time. A lot of rich people come in here that don't care about money, that have an absurd amount of money, and they don't care to spend 20 euros on a Coca-Cola or 20 euros on a parking spot, you know? But guys like me, guys that live here, that are Croatians, that live every day, all year in Croatia, we care about a bag of olives being $3 instead of $1.25 in the winter. Like, the other day, I went to go buy olives. This little bag of olives I buy for, like, a pizza. It's just enough for, like, a, to put on a pizza. It was $2.99. T today, I go to the same store because it's September now and tourist season's essentially over. It's 125 euros. And I'm like, geez, like, I get it. I get that. Everybody make max money. Our, my hotels go up, my hotels go down in the winter. My hotels go up in the summer, down in the winter. Like from 40 euros to 120. Yes, I get that part because it's supply and demand. But honestly, if you're a Croatian and there's supermarkets that are Croatian, like Tommy Plodine, all these Croatian supermarkets, the people of Croatia that live here all year and that actually live here, not the ones that just come here for the summer and make money and go back to Germany. Screw those people. People that have families here, that their kids go to school here, and they live here all year, especially on Chiovo and these islands. We should have a discount card that gives us discounts. But I understand why we don't have a discount card. It's because people would buy groceries for their guests and abuse it to make their you know, their apartment seem better because they're like, oh, these guys give us discounts if we stay with them, you know? I get that part. That part sucks too, you know? But it shouldn't be like that. It should be like, only you get to do it and you have a max amount. So you only get a discount, 100 euros a week or something off of groceries or 50 euros or 20 euros or whatever it is. But so then nobody would use it for their guests because why would you use it for your guests when you want to use it, you know? And that's the thing. Everything's geared towards the tourists. Like, for instance, after the Bura comes and the Yugo and stuff like that, the Bura and Yugo are like these winds from the, the north and the south, the hot winds and the cold winds. One brings in all the trash from the sea. In the summertime and just before summer, the city will come, clean it up, put new rocks down on the beach, new pebbles. But in the winter, it happens often, I guess. I guess I, guess I get it, but it's like, it happens so often that the beach is just filled with like sticks and debris, not like garbage, garbage, like broken trees, uh, vegetables, um, maybe dead pigs, maybe a dead sea, sea turtle will pop up like the one year I was here. I seen a sea turtle and a dead pig all bloated right beside each other. But yeah, the beaches get filthy and then you can't, so in the, in the winter here, they, we have nice days. We have nice days to sit here and it's nice to go to the beach, but we can't sit on the beach because they're just filled with debris from the sea. And that's not fair. I wish they would just clean that up every so often. Maybe not put new rocks down because I get that that costs money. But just get the trucks come clean it every so often so it always looks good. And maybe in the winter, when tour some tourists still come in the winter, maybe in the winter it wouldn't look so bad in the winter. So that's just an idea, you know? So that's another thing where it's just geared towards tourists. Everything's here it seems like it's towards tourists, geared towards tourists. Like if you go to town, everybody's trying to sell something to the tourists. And it's just, that kind of stuff kind of drives me crazy. But hey, that's life here. I'm not really complaining about it because I do it too, right? But it's just, I wish they would do something more for the locals. Like instead of hiring people from third world countries to come help out with work, why don't you make it more affordable and tax free or something? Because they give these uh, foreigners like from Nepal and stuff, whoever hires them they get a discount and all that stuff and they get free money kind of so they get a discount with the government so why don't they do that with people that are from croatia that moved away from croatia that have croatian roots maybe that would get people to come back here and live because croatia is not that bad it just needs to help out its real citizens and its real croatian blood a little bit more that's what i think you know stop selling it to the foreigners make it croatians i mean croatia for croatians that's all i'm saying <laughs> The fourth thing that I hate in Croatia is people walking their dogs at night or early in the morning and not bringing poop bags and leaving the poop on the beach. Like there's kids running on the beach. They're gonna think that's a little chocolate bar. You know, maybe stick their toys in it because they think it's mud. 
You know, we don't want that. I don't want that. I'm walking in my sandals, my bare feet sometimes. I don't want to step in a little landmine. I don't want that. So just pick up your poop. I hate that. The poop, you know? Poop and lizards, that's all you see on the beach. Lizards are like the rats here. Like you see lizards everywhere like rats. You know how you see rats in some like New York? Well, here you see lizards everywhere. They're, they're the rats. You see poop and lizards everywhere. Poop and lizards, poop and lizards. <laughs> but yeah the poop i don't the dogs the dogs you know just pick up the dog poop come on another one to go with that i guess because it kind of is the same thing like beach beach stuff smoking in public i mean i'm not telling nobody to stop smoking it's your life you can smoke but smoking around kids is a bit strange but hey that's cultural nobody should tell them to change i'm not telling them to change i just don't like it I'm telling you something I don't like. I don't like smoking. I don't smoke. So why would I like smoking? If I like smoking, I would smoke. Makes sense, right? So yeah, smoking cigarette butts, you know, don't like that. On the beach, especially, you're trying to lay there on the beach and you got a cigarette butt in your ear. Don't like that. Don't like cigarette butts in my ear. Call me weird, but yeah. Smoking on the beach, coughing out a lung. You know, everybody coughs, but shit. A smoker's cough is different. It hits different on a sunny day. I'll tell you that. <laughs> Especially when, when everybody's out here crying about COVID, you got this guy with a smoker's cough. Damn. You know? <laughs> but yeah, no. But yeah, you can't really... <laughs> I mean, that's that's something that's annoying. Sure. A lot of people hate smoking. Sure. But you can't change it. That's Croatia. If you go to a cafe, there's going to be a guy that sits on the same coffee for f freaking four hours, smoking six packs of smokes. And that's his life, bro. That's his life. That's called social activities here. You want to get social? You better pick up a pack of cigarettes and drink some coffee if you want to be social with me. That's what Croatian people say. So you can't change that, can you? But we're out here. Let's go. Let's get on to the last point. Let's get this video wrapped up. It's been good. Now the fifth thing I hate about Croatia is that Croatia is so goddamn beautiful. Beautiful. I'm so pissed. That because I'm Croatian, why didn't I move here before my 30s? Why did I wait till 36 to move here? 35 to move here? Why didn't I come here at 19, 18? You know, that's the only thing I hate. How beautiful it is. Like when I first came 13, I went to Slavonia and the war was going on. And I absolutely love it. Something inside of me said, I got to live here in my life. I got This is where I belong, not Canada. So that's why I came here, right? And then when I came here, we bought a house on Chiovo. So then when we bought a house on Chiovo and I got to see the coast, I'm just like, well, you go to every city, every city, Primošten, you go to Šibenik, you go to Zadar, you go to Trogir, you go to Klis, you go to Solin, you go to, you know, Omish, Makarska, Split, you go to Dubrovnik. They're all co like typical coastline cities, but yet they all have their own kind of romance to it it's its own beauty to it and it's amazing especially if you get to visit them in the shoulder season like september is the perfect month like i always say the perfect month you get to see the real beauty and the real charm of these cities so that is the thing that bugs me is why didn't i move here earlier it's so goddamn beautiful it pisses me off and I wasted so much time in canada did so many bad things made mistakes but hey without those mistakes I wouldn't be here today, so let's go. That's the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, take it with a grain of salt, a pinch of salt, what I just said. Some of it was kind of making jokes of everything, and some of it was serious, some of it wasn't. So it was a bit of satire, so don't get too bent out of shape, my Croatian people or my travelers. Croatia is a beautiful country. There's not really much I hate about it. That's why I continue to live here, and that's why I'll never move from here. And... I continue to travel all throughout Croatia because this is, to me, the best place to be. And a lot of people, I think once you guys come here or visit here, you guys will see it's a beautiful place. Croatia is the best. Remember, click like, subscribe, and share, and always comment. And if you're in the area, come take a picture with your boy. Come have a drink. Whatever you want. I'll be here forever and ever. Forever, ever, forever.